So we found that one of the most challenging parts of the bus conversion is really just figuring out like what order we have to do things in. It seems like such a, there's so many things that rely on other things that then that relies on something else. It's like a domino effect. And so sometimes you're having to think like 10 steps ahead and then backtracking to figure out what order to do things in. And um, it's kind of exhausting sometimes. We just, we don't want to work ourselves into a corner where all of a sudden we get to some point and think, well, shoot, we can't, you know, we can't do this or we have to undo something because we forgot to do something else first and all of that. All of this to say, today we're doing something that feels like it should be more of like an end of the road part of the interior renovation. And that is we are gonna work on building our pocket doors. Um, it seems like building the interior doors that are like closing off the rooms, it just feels like that should be more towards the end, especially because this is where some of our fun design accents are gonna be. Um, I mean, we still don't even, aren't even fully insulated or have walls built or anything, but our, where the pocket doors close, like if that makes sense, when you slide them closed, those are gonna butt into like the walls for like our cabinetry, our closets and our pantry and things like that. So <clears throat> in order for us to start building any of our like that cabinetry we have to know exactly where those pocket doors are gonna end like what their prof like making sure the profile is perfectly vertical so that we can match them up and we don't have some kind of weird gaps between the edge of the pocket door and the wall that it's butting up into all of those things um, we also can't really like close in our the two walls that create the pocket um, until we get the pocket door in there. And so then other things can't be done until those walls are closed in, all of that. It's like, you know, if, if you have kids and you ever read, if you give a mouse a cookie, feels like that's the perpetual state we're living in. <laughs> it's like just what are the dominoes that, what is it, what are the things that have to come after that we have to account for before we can do things and so today we are planning, designing, starting work on building our pocket doors. So first step in that is getting all of our measurements exactly right. How wide does it need to be? How tall is it gonna be? And all of that is dependent on our track and the sliding hardware. So we're gonna go inside the bus now and Juan's gonna tell you guys about the hardware and all of that and then we will get started. All right, so now we're on the inside. Um, this is the support that we built for our pocket door uh, track a long time ago because we had to fit that pipe, so there's a vent pipe, in this pocket door. So it's in the back of the pocket door, so it'll you know, be sandwiched in between where the pocket door slides. So we also then had to know where to put our toilet. And so that's how this wall came to be. And so when we measured out this wall, we made sure that it was at a 90 with the floor and, um, and we built up this railing to, you know, to be nice and strong and support everything. Well, now we're getting ready to plan for the door. And so we have installed, um, not permanently yet, but we've installed um, the railing and some of the sliders that go in it so that we could get a measurement of how far that is from the very top of the of the door to all the way to the bottom um, to the subfloor so this we still have to account for there's going to be flooring on top of this so there's going to be um, some kind of underlayment and then our flooring and then also a gap so that the door rides you know it doesn't scrape across the ground and stuff like that and so we've been trying to do all those calculations but the first measurements we got it's about 71 and a half i believe inches right to the bottom of this base plate here so we're going to base kind of everything off of that we also know that this door um, 
we want to be I think 22 inches long is that right like where it's open yeah the opening oh the opening is like 20 and a half inches I think okay so maybe 20 and a half inches long and so um, the door then has to be wide enough to accommodate that plus have a little bit inside so that you don't you know it doesn't open all the way and then you, you can see it on the side and so we're thinking of making the doors about maybe 24 inches wide and so there will always be two or three inches inside of this door to keep it um, so that it, it looks nice when it's when it's all the way closed um, so here's the track and we did get this um, this is a soft close so once you push it it'll kind of you know it sucks itself in and then it, it provides resistance as it pulls out and then it goes free and again you push it right to it and then it just pulls itself in and kind of soft closes on a little rubber bumper so hopefully that'll keep it from knocking around and making too much noise but this is the track so far and we designed it so it could go you know a lot further back if we need it to um, we may cut this off but we probably won't <laughs> we just made it as long as we possibly could to keep our options open um, and we didn't we knew on this side we didn't need it to go this far because the door will actually probably come um, to here it won't actually go all the way to the end of the track and so um, that's what we're working on right now and trying to do all the math and trying to figure out what style of door and what kind of stain and all that kind of stuff so we're right in the middle of figuring all that out but the first thing was let's get the dimensions on the door all right so this is a Johnson track um, a Johnson uh, pocket door mechanism and so they normally come with sliders or uh, carriers that are like this so they're three wheeled they're they got nice ball bearings on them and they got plastic so they're nice and quiet um, this is what they normally come with and you know these just slide back and forth there's no soft close soft open or anything if you want soft close soft open that's a whole nother mechanism and it looks like this so it's this same car but instead of just being the car it also has this um, this contains a shock here um, kind of to per, like slow down the movement and a spring on the other side and so that's what when you close it and it um, and it kind of closes itself it's using the spring to pull it shut and it's using the the shock to kind of slow all of that stuff down and so um, that's the way it works so on our doors we are going to do both soft open and soft close and that's one of the reasons we had to go with a 24 inch door because Johnson recommends if you're going to do a soft open and a soft close meaning you'll have one of these in the front and then switched around the other way one in the back you need a 24 inch door to be able to accommodate that and so we can fit a 24 inch door even this though this is probably about a 21 or 20 and a half inch opening um, so there's going to be quite a bit of door inside which is which is not too bad so anyway um, that's what we're gonna go with and again we're gonna go both soft open and soft close so if you slam the door back it should be able to catch it with the spring and then kind of suck it into the um, into the pocket so now comes the fun part of like how are we gonna actually build this door what are we gonna build it out of what's the design gonna be so we've thought about a million different ways and ideas and stuff but what we have kind of come around to is like let's see if we can implement a little bit of style and design into the door instead of just having kind of a plain flat door um, as we've been kind of planning out how we want the finished product to look and just a few of the design elements now I will just say like neither of us are great at design or any of that like that's not our background or our forte we just kind of know what we like and what our eye is drawn to and so we're just gonna go with that um also we we don't love woodworking yet i hope that the more we do this we'll get better at it um but we've become a lot more comfortable with metalwork um than woodwork so a lot of the wood projects that we're going to be working on coming up in the rest of this build like we're just learning as we go um we sure have found an appreciation for the craftsmanship and um 
art that good woodworking truly is. Um, so back to our design elements is we don't really want gobs and gobs of bright colors. We're going to have a little bit of color, but not bright colors. We'd like to keep it a little more calm. Our kids bring enough color and crazy <laughs> into the house. And so we'd like to keep the colors and the design elements fairly simple and calm. Um, but one of the kind of elements that we keep coming back to as we just search pictures and things is um, sort of this slatted wood look that we've seen on cabinets and fences and walls that you know are sort of like a mid-century modern type design element that's what we keep coming back to and so we we love that because it adds some depth and texture without having to add a lot of pattern or color um, and so we're gonna try incorporating some of that into a few, couple of different places in the bus and we thought we would take a most of most of what we've seen is like horizontal slats and we are going to incorporate some of that in the bus but we thought we might make a to kind of take a twist on that for our pocket doors and do some vertical slats on the doors so <clears throat> we just got some of our scrap plywood to kind of play with and test out some of the ideas that are running in our head when we make the door for real, we're gonna use nice, you know, good quality. I think we're gonna use some maple plywood, um, but we're just using our scrap scrap pile plywood for now. So, sort of the the components of the door, we're gonna kind of have three layers. The core of the door is gonna be just a big rectangle of three quarter ply, and then on the front side of our doors that's where we're playing with this design right now so we just cut some strips of plywood um, of the three-quarter ply into all, into pieces that are also three-quarter inches wide as well and we're we've been playing with like how to make these slats and if we like that and so one of the things that we've seen in some pictures is instead of using just like the the top side of the plywood if you expose the ply like the edging of it the ply that can actually be a really interesting piece of design like it, it already gives you like little stripes and um so we thought well let's see if we even if we even like that look and so we played around we just cut a few pieces and we played around with you know how if we did that how wide would we go um you know how much space would we put in between this we could also you know group a couple of these together so they make kind of wider slats and then put a little bit of a bigger gap between them and do something like that where you know we kind of have these like little wider slats that have the vertical striping on them from the plies or, you know, do we do just the flat face of the plywood and line them up, you know, either close together or further apart? Anyway, we've played around, we took some pictures of what are some of our different options, do we like this? And at this point, we've kind of decided we either like the faces showing and then keeping them real tight together real and do like the individual skinny slats and keep them close together we like that or if we want to do the ply edge showing we like where it's stacked in two and they're a little bit fatter um, with a bigger gap it feels since this is already such a busy pattern it feels like by doing bigger pieces that are spaced a little further apart feels a little less busy to our eyes so those are kind of the ideas we're thinking of right now for that front side so now that gives us a total of an inch and a half um, once we stack those pieces together an inch and a half of the inch and three-quarter thickness of the door that we need um, 
I think what's going to determine what which of those designs we go with is going to be based on the testing we do with some stain. Um, the doors are going to be stained and you know we don't know how the plywood is going to look when it's stained and how these edges are going to look when they're stained and so we're going to do some stain testing and then we'll decide after that which of these looks that we like better. Now on the back side of the doors now remember we have two pocket doors on the back side of the doors um, we're gonna do something a little bit different which I think we'll talk about that a little bit later but one of the back sides is in the bathroom and the other back side of the door is in the back bedroom so those are gonna have a little bit of a different uh, finish in the back Ready? Yeah. So we cut the width as well with the table saw and now this is the approximate height of our door. Um, we're going to have a little trim work around the outside so we had to account for that. Um, but this is sort of the center core of the door to which we will attach our little strips and then we have a treatment for the back that we're going to do. So this is the beginnings of our first pocket door. All right, so we um, just temper temporarily mounted the little carrier things on the top of the door, and we're gonna just kind of test hang it yep. and get everything lined up and see how it fits and square everything up, all of that. Okay. I'm not gonna put them all the way in. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> You're so proud. So nice. Pretty square with the door. So <clears throat> So we want this part to yeah. be kind of flush right flush yep so i have to adjust Once. this so it needs to come out well we got to leave space for a trim for the yeah for the 1 8 inch trim so maybe okay so we've got some adjusting to do so we'll pull it up in the back just a touch because it's just not square down there oh yeah and so we'll pull it up just a touch in the back and then so those little carrier things have adjustable nuts on them or something is that right so you can yes pull it up or down right correct it'll look good when it's closed because it, you know this is actually too far see that yeah we don't want it in that far but right so yeah. we'll adjust that too <clears throat> so but it looks good it rolls good so down here at the bottom it's not quite sitting uh, straight as you can see it's sticking out beyond our framework and up at the top it's nice and flush so he's adjusting the little carrier in the back to pull that back end up and hopefully that will okay, did that pull the bottom closer. up Let's see. <clears throat> bringing it up yeah just a little bit more okay about right there good about right there okay yep good So the next step in building the pocket doors is to decide what stain we want to put on the wood. And I know I kept saying that it was maple plywood, um, but it's not, it's birch. I was mistaken about that. So this is our birch plywood. So from the scrap that we cut off, 
we cut ourselves five pieces and we have four different stains that we're gonna be testing out and then one we're just going to leave natural um, and just see how we like all the different ones. So we put the name of each stain that we're gonna use on the back and we are going to start by, well, we've sanded them all with 220, we've cleaned them with mineral spirits um, and then the first step we're gonna do then is to put some of the pre-stained wood conditioner on all five of them. And when that's done, we will add a coat of stain to each one. And we wanna check it on the side, but since we're considering doing that kind of decorative treatment on the top, we're also gonna sort of compare how the stain takes on the ply edge. So we're just gonna do the top and the one side and one edge of each one. And um, when we're all done, we're gonna give it a coat of just lacquer spray. Um, we're gonna do a semi-gloss and then probably give it a light sand. So hopefully it'll end up with more of a satin finish. So we're gonna test all that out on each one and decide which one we like the best. All right, so we put the pre-stain conditioner on all five of them and then did four different stains, just one coat, and wiped it off. And we don't know yet. <laughs> so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back and maybe put a second coat of each one just on half of the wood and see if that changes our mind or helps us make a decision at all. And then, um, and then, when that's all dry and ready, then we will put the lacquer over the whole thing, and then I think we'll decide. We're leaning towards maybe leaving it natural or doing the lighter color, but you can see it's a real range of colors. This, um, the golden oak is the lightest that we have, and then kind of the English chestnut, we have provincial, this dark one is dark walnut, and so, I don't know, I think we're kind of feeling maybe the lighter colors. We know for sure we don't want anything that leans too red or too, like, really yellow. Um, we want something fairly neutral, shade of brown, if that makes sense. So, I don't know. We'll see once uh, we finish this up which one we decide on. Okay, so yesterday we put a second coat on the bottom half of each of the four boards with the stain. And then last night we came back after that had dried and we added three coats of the spray on lacquer. Um, <clears throat> and then we waited and checked it out this morning. So uh, this is the English chestnut. So you can see the one coat, two coats, and the lacquer made a really big difference. It really finished very nicely. You can see then there's the end there, what these look like. This is the golden oak, one coat, two coats, and the ends. This is the provincial, one coat and two coats, and the end. The dark walnut <clears throat> with one coat, two coats, there's the end. And then this one, <clears throat> we left natural. So this just has the pre-stained conditioner and lacquer, and that's it. So <clears throat> after doing all of that, we've taken these inside our house to see what they look like in different lighting. Um, we wanted to put it against the white as well um, versus just keeping it out here on the plywood, which gave it a weird hue. We also, um, we haven't decided on our floors yet, but we do have a bunch of flooring samples. And so we brought out some of our favorite ones and uh, kind of lined them up next to see how would this kind of coordinate with our flooring. And so right now, after all of that, we still aren't 100% decided, but 
we are leaning towards either <clears throat> the golden oak, probably with just one coat, um, or just the natural. After all of that, we really um, like the lighter colors a little bit better. So I think what's going to be the deciding factor for us is I think we're going to cut these into some of our little strips and play around with a design with just these two boards and then then that'll hopefully help us make our decision as to which one we want to use. So um, that's it for the stain testing. Now we're going to play around with the design a little bit more and then we're going to actually start building these doors. Okay so we took our samples and we cut some strips and laid them on kind of the other half to give you an idea of sort of what it might look like. Now this is just using the flat edges as the front of the strips and we brought it in the bus to look see what they would look like in this lighting because um, it looks a little different. It actually has a the both of them have a warmer tone in here in the bus than they do outside. So we wanted to make sure we make a choice based on kind of the lighting we have in here. Now obviously we don't have overhead lights in yet or anything like that, but um, just with the natural light in here, what might this look like? And so I think we have pretty much decided we like the natural over the golden oak. I still really like the golden oak, but um, I think we're gonna go with just the natural one. So now, it comes down to do we like it and I'm just these aren't attached at all um, so they're kind of slipping around but do we like something like this with just the nice flat edges or if I flip these over to show the ply edge something like that oh, do we like that and we like them both, of course. Um, th they both give a lot of dimension and texture just with the kind of the raised edges that you get. And then this adds even additional texture and color with the stripe pattern. I think, well, I'm gonna say this now and I may, I, I reserve the right to change my mind before we glue it together and nail it together. But I think we're gonna keep it simple just with the simple texture of the flat fronts. So <clears throat> I think it's gonna be something like that. We don't, we don't have the exact spacing figured out, but after all of that, so funny going through all the different colors and stains and are we gonna use the ply edge? We went with the simplest option we had, which was the you know, no stain and not using the ply edge. Um, but you know what, it was worth trying all of that so that we can be sure in our decision. So we'll see, we're gonna start making some cuts and building it out on the correct sizes and we'll see how it goes.